it's just really a great energy and a lot of good people. Um, so take a look at the Libertopia site. The land of Arcadia. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on Friday, May 11, 2018 for Arcadia's weekly market wrap up where today we're gonna cover Libertopia, which is where I was at last week. Sorry, there was no video, but a lot of good, positive things actually happening. So if you're tired of just hearing the problems and some good things that are coming out in response to that, I'm gonna cover that. Also, quick run over the markets, uh, keep you updated on what's been going on. But let's start here with Libertopia. It was out in San Diego last week, uh, Thursday through Sunday. And, you know, one of the things I struggled with when I was sitting on a trading floor back in 2008, 2009, watching all these things fall apart. And then fortunately, I was lucky enough to come in contact with Austrian economics and essentially what I call the, the true version of how all this stuff works. Um, and one of the things that was tough was feeling like I was sitting on a trading floor around Wall Street guys that didn't get it and, you know, I was learning about these great ideas of free markets and really what the intervention by especially the Federal Reserve and all the other government forces have done to the markets. Yet it was kind of tricky because I was doing it a lot through the internet and just listening to podcasts and I guess what's nice is here at Libertopia, and certainly there are other festivals, crypto festivals, and a lot of events, but it's great to get out and meet people that are seeing the same things. You get to actually, or for me, got to actually meet a lot of the people that I've studied. Jeffrey Tucker was the MC of the event, which was great uh, just to hear him speak. Um, a lot of crypto speakers. Jeff Burrick was there the last day. It was great to meet Jeff. Um, Jeff the Dollar Vigilante, who is a great speaker um, and has really helped push this movement forward because, and I, and I think in ways that's what the cryptos represent is the collective energy of the people who are saying, we see the money printing, we see the endless debt, we see these things, we see where it's headed, let's do something about it and really displaying the entrepreneurial spirit that I was always told our country was based on. So it was really inspiring. And I'd just like to say thank you for everyone who was there, everyone I had the pleasure of meeting. It was just really a great energy and a lot of good people. Um, so take a look at the Libertopia site. I think a lot of the things were recorded. I was the AV guy for part of them. So if there's a camera slip up, that could be me. Yet, um, as they release some of those videos, I'd say just take a look if you go up here through the schedule, a lot of really interesting talks and most of them you will be able to see. So there is the schedule page and I'll let you check that out for yourself. As for uh, the markets, uh, an interesting story this week, maybe you caught or not, but apparently Argentina appears to be on the verge of another currency crisis. And as I wrote for Miles Franklin, it's interesting, you know, Argentina, we're getting used to seeing them run into currency trouble. Um, but if you actually take a look at the article, and I'll read a couple of the highlights, it was interesting because everything they cited of why Argentina's having trouble applies directly to the US, to the dollar, the treasury market, more so um, than Argentina. So in this first quote here, Argentina went back into heavy indebtedness and now debt servicing payments will rise. Certainly that applies to the U.S. where another thing that doesn't get mentioned perhaps as often as I feel it should is how in addition with the other problems that the rising rates will have on the real estate, um, the stock market as well, um, as rates go up, remember a lot of the government financing is in short-term debt, which means interest expenses are going up. Um, so certainly that applies here. We see the effort to halt the depreciation of the currency came amid concerns about central banks, independence, and government's ability to contain inflation. Um, <laughs> well, just think about the Fed and the Treasury. I don't feel too good about either of the U.S.'s government agencies' ability to do that. Um, here you see Argentine equities have dropped, the peso is weakened. 
certainly since rates have been going up, we've seen the stock market finally slow down. Um, and then the last one here, Argentina's external debt has grown basically now to, uh, according to the IMF, 39% of GDP, which you know, might, might sound like that's not ideal. Although consider the US is already over 100%. And of course, that doesn't even factor in Social Security and Medicare obligations, which uh, there is a link here to Lawrence Glitnikoff's estimate that that actually clocks in at over 200 trillion in an economy with a GDP of less than 20 trillion. So, you know, it reminds me of when I was back on Wall Street, and I guess when I thought I knew it was onto something, I would. Uh, there was one point where I remember of seeing, looking at similar numbers to this. They weren't quite as big then, but still stunning. Thinking about all the money printing and how this was going to end up, and I would ask some of the guys at the shop I worked at, you know, that I respected, were smart guys, and but the only thing I ever heard was, "Well, this doesn't happen in the U.S.," which. Uh, in my experience and research, the markets do have a way of addressing those statements. As you can see here, uh, interest rates still sitting there just below 3%. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of money in uh, position right at that 3% mark. So it'll be interesting to see when can I say when it finally breaks through three, if the Fed is going to stop quantitative easing, raise interest rates, certainly you would think that's where we're headed. And it will be interesting to see how the markets respond to that. Quick look at the cryptos, getting uniformly pummeled again today, still not back down to the lows of about a month or so ago, but um, you know they are down a bit today again, as I've said here the past couple of weeks and months. Um, and certainly what was pointed out at Libertopia is the growing adoption and how these things are being used. And if that continues and they become a main part of business, technology and life, <clears throat> which everything Warren Buffett's comments aside, uh, I continue to believe is the case. So if you're wondering, is this mean that cryptos are about to collapse or if it's a good buying opportunity, well, certainly if, uh, if I do something brilliant and earn a new pile of cash today, I would love to buy Litecoin at $140. That's uh, about a, maybe a little less than a third of its high. Um, so all of them, uh, or at least uh, Litecoin, uh, Veritasium has gotten bummed pretty good too. Down to 88 bucks. I'm a big Veritasium fan. Again, uh, Wow, look at salt has gotten torched, goodness. <laughs> so again, those levels based on my view of those particular cryptos seem really good. As always, do your own research, uh, dig in and understand them. I'm planning on doing some more crypto specific analysis going forward. Um, hopefully I'll find 50 hours in a day soon, but we're getting there. So. Anyway, um, I think if you're picking the cryptos that have a good case and are gonna be fundamental pillars going forward, that then uh, these prices are pretty good from that perspective. Quick look at silver, kind of just sitting there, has fluctuated a bit over the past uh, couple weeks. Again, what's been interesting below the surface, it seems like the banks who have been short a lot of metal for a long time have pawned that off on the chart readers who are the technical funds, um, who again, my understanding has been getting kind of worked for the last couple decades. Um, so usually the banks come out ahead of these and if the estimates uh, that JP Morgan has accumulated as much as possibly 700 million ounces of physical silver, which Ted Butler writes about quite regularly. If you do not know about Ted, please check out Butler Research. Uh, I'm a subscriber to that. I've found it's incredible information. Um, he also posts a lot of free content online as well, if you look for Ted. Um, but based on his research, he's calculated um, over 700 million ounces of silver which certainly would be an indication that perhaps there's a reason for that and prices may go higher. 
So we shall see. I think it's coming. Um, so I still look at silver or gold, although more so silver, um, you know, especially so close to the cost of production or what it takes to get it out of the ground. So that seems like a good buy to me. Um, you may have to wait a while, but, you know, unless somehow uh, there's some magical plan to undo all of the borrowing and printing that I've yet to come up with. Uh, I think at some point you're going to see much higher prices of silver by multiples of where it's trading now. So with that said, we'll wrap up. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to be posting some highlights from Libertopia. So hit the subscribe button so you can get those as soon as they're released. And with that said, have a blessed weekend. I do appreciate you watching and I hope you're well out there. Thanks.